So we went through in the last tutorial, we looked at the AI generation, which you can see in the background there uh, using the new Medid Splint app. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at it from a different perspective. We're not going to use the AI function. We're going to go through with a manual generation. We're going to go through each of these steps one by one to be able to customize it. So let's click on that little new blue icon for Medid Splints. Let's load this up. So with the manual function, why would you uh, use that? Um, well, realistically, like I said in the last one, it's for customizing it a little bit more, more coverage, a little bit more thickness, however you want to do it. Um, when you've already created a case like this, it's going to say select project. I'm going to click cancel, okay? Because I want it to import the data and it's still got everything in the file section that we generated in the last one. It's still got the splint that we generated with the AI. Um, again, it's automatically configured it so that we've got the maxilla here at the top and the mandible here. And we still have the option to be able to bring in uh, local files if we want to bring in uh, scans from another scanner or from where, whichever source. But we don't need to. We've already got these. We've got these from a scan of my teeth that I took myself. So let's click confirm. We're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to click maxilla here confirm but this time instead of auto uh, creation with the AI tool we're going to go through each of these stages one by one with a manual creation so we have just the same as the other apps all of these different stages that we're going to go through we're going to firstly going to make sure this data is nice and what do I mean by nice we're going to trim away um, anything that we don't like. So the trimming tool, you can see each of these different stages, it's the exact same thing and the same layout as some of the other apps that we, you know, we have the same tools available. Um, the selection tools, uh, the reversal tools, the paint tools, the holes uh, that we can fill with these little functions at the bottom. Um, but we, we don't really need to use that for this. Um, in this case, I'm just going to zoom things in. Um, I don't really need to go through and delete any of this. I could tidy it up if I want to, uh, to go through to a model stage a little bit later. Uh, there's no holes to fill, which I could do, but let's just check. So let's turn off the lower arch here. And then I'm going to bring this over. And I'm wrong. You can see here we have a couple of little holes. So I'm going to select these. Um, I'm going to click this hole fill. Okay. And you can see it's highlighted these holes. Maximum perimeter of a hole. And why would it do that? Perhaps because it might think that this whole structure is a hole that needs to fill we don't want that so i'm just going to click this little apply button hole could not be filled so one of those it couldn't fill but that's okay because the others it has so you've got that function which we could do but for the best part that scan's looking good and you can see in this splint tool it automatically moves the scan into a position that is relative to the bite planes that we want here. The midline, it's already done. The, uh, the, 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 the most anterior part of the teeth, it's moved in line here. Um, it's already aligned it with these three points, but we could redo that again. Um, we can apply with four points if we wanted to. Say we had less teeth and it couldn't do it, then we could obviously go through with everything. So, you know, if we move this out of the way again, I'm going to select four points here. And it'll align it again. So it's not quite as nice. You see here, it's not quite move things over with the uh, incisor. The II did actually a better job. So I'm going to delete these points. And let's have another go. Uh, 
let's just select the center of these sixes, the midline point here, and the center of this six, and you can see it's moved it again. And we can obviously, we can rotate things, we can move things how we want, shift them a little bit. If we want to try and bring things into position, this is quite a big arch. I mean, I've, I've got a big arch here, but it's it's okay. The AI actually did a little bit better job, but um, it is what it is. So let's go through. We're going to go through to the occlusal adjustment mode. So here you can see in this software, one of the nice things that I've noticed that I don't know if you saw then. Let's go back a stage and I'll see if you can notice it when we open it, when we go back to the next stage again. When it opens the, um, the byte here on this next stage, it doesn't just open it vertically. It'll actually retract it a little bit as well. So let's click this again, see if you notice it. You see, you see it shift back as well as not just down. Um, so we can open this up and look at this. It's actually got a hinge, an artificial hinge that that's brought in. And I haven't recorded that. I haven't used any sort of uh, articulation, uh, bite fork, or you know, I haven't used a face bow. I haven't used any uh, virtual articulator settings. I haven't brought in anything like Modjaw for a you know a um, dynamic occlusion. It is just its own interpretation of of how that occlusion should be, but that's nice. So, you know, we can we can open things up a little bit uh, to choose how big this distance we want to be. And again, I'm gonna put in this distance as about one mil here. And then you can see it's telling you how much you want. You can import these uh, settings, uh, sorry, you can uh, type these settings in or adjust them with this uh, slider. So if we move to the next stage, this is the inner surface creation mode. So this is the where we're going to block out any undercuts. So if you've ever used anything like a splint software before, if you've used your know, guide design software, then this will be something similar uh, in mind. So I'm going to tilt this in a direction that I want to insert the final splint. So for me, what that means is getting over these anteriors a little bit more than it's suggesting here. Uh, because I don't want a load of undercut in front of these teeth. I don't mind a little bit more undercut towards um, the posterior. So let's go with that. And you can see set arrow to your viewpoint. So I'm going to click that. And you can see it's adjusted this undercut. Now what that's done is it's reduced this undercut on this side. I can do it maybe a little bit more. So there's less of a gap there. But that problem then it creates more undercut here. We don't want that. So there's a happy medium, all right? And I think that's about there, where there's gonna be a little bit of undercut there, a little bit of undercut on the buckle side here. So we've got this undercut. You can see this final auction. You can preview the splint. That's a really nice touch. So if we just turn that on and have a look what that preview is. It's gonna create this inner surface by extruding out using that undercut. So that's the inner surface of what it'll do to the scan for it to be able to fit. Now, this is the offset and this is what controls this. So 0.1 mil, so 100 microns. If you find that you've gone through this process and the splints are a little bit baggy, then you could potentially reduce this and they'll be a little bit tighter but it may also be to do with your print settings. So if you go through these process, whichever the software it is, whichever, whether it's Medit, XCAD, InLab, whatever, if you go through this and you find that these splints are baggy, first thing I would make sure is just make sure your print is well calibrated. Um, just so that you, you know, when you make any changes here, then it's gonna, you know, go forward uh, in a really nice and accurate way. But let's turn that preview off. I'm happy with that. Uh, do I want to? I want to maybe turn down the smooth surface a little bit more because I want to use a little bit more of a flexible material. Maybe um, I don't know. One of the 3D printing splint uh, materials are a little bit more flexible than hard. I like those. So let's go to the outline designation. So on the next stage, we're going to select the area of which the splint is going to sit. 
it's creating this inner surface in a similar way to that preview. And you can see, just like the AI tool, it's automatically set where this splint is going to go. And I'm going to adjust this a little bit more here. I'm going to bring this up. Just so that past the canines, I had this going quite high. Only from past experience myself, I know that the undercut on that side, I need it to cover a little bit more. Um, but that's just my teeth. And here, same thing, I'm gonna cover a little bit more on that side. Just so it covers those wisdom teeth a little bit more. I could probably maybe bring in this to be a bit rounder, there we go. And maybe bring this one up a little bit. Okay, so that's just my preference. You might have your own preference. You might decide that you want to keep it running along the buccal surface of the teeth, and that's okay, that's you. So again, we've got all of this. You can see that if you add more green points by clicking anywhere on the line, so this line here, what it's talking about, if I click there, I've got another point that I can then manipulate here. I didn't need to in this case, but there you go, you can. So let's go back. I'm going to, uh, sorry, let's go to the next stage. It's going to create the outer surface by using that outline that I've made. Again, it's going to extrude it uh, with the thickness that we've set before. So there we go. We have a little bit more coverage, a little bit more thickness than that AI tool uh, had originally given. It's not quite covered this bit here, so I might just go back. Why do I cover that a little bit more? I just want that undercut. It'll rule out any any interaction with this uh, gingival margin. But for my own preference, I just want that little bit more coverage so that I don't just have things sitting next to the edge. And at the front, I'll dip it down so that it feels a little bit thinner for my lips. That's just my, my personal preference with my own from wearing, probably from wearing gum shields a lot, I guess. But here in this next stage, uh, lingual and buccal thickness here. So we can turn this up or down. It's at 1.5 mil. That's probably about right. Smooth the surface. So you can see it's smooth quite a lot. If we turn this down, this might be a little bit more preferential for people who don't like the feeling of things being so smooth again from experience of these um you know you if you've not made many splints like this some people prefer uh the the surface to feel a little bit more like um your teeth rather than very flat and you know and unusual uh it helps their teeth feel better together but again it's personal preference so you can see as i'm turning this down Just that little bit shapely here. There we go. Okay, and that feels a little bit more ridgy so that you can feel those teeth there. And there we get to this stage where uh, at this point we can make any final changes. We can see if we turn on this color map um, whether we have enough thickness uh, there if there's more than uh, enough okay so we can add we can remove we can smooth uh, we can change any of these shapes if we want to so um, say for example where this brush is now I want to bulge this out a little bit in this area I can if I want to dip it down I can if I want to smooth it I can also do that okay so say you wanted to virtually grind away then we can bring in the opposing arch here. You can see where those teeth are. And this again depends on your own experiences, your own preference, whether you want to go down this road. Okay. 
Uh, for me, I'm probably happier with just having it that thickness and then trying it in the mouth. The only thing that would change me is if I saw it coming through this surface here where I knew there was a sort of even amount uh, around over these surfaces um, and it's not looking too thin anywhere, but I'm happy. And then finally we can load up uh, whatever text we want on the surface. Again, I don't tend to do this. Some people do, I know, uh, but I don't tend to do this simply because I think it's just a plaque trap that people's tongue will play with and um, I don't think I would like it, uh, but some people do. So we can add that if you want to, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna, so I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna click OK and then save it. I'm gonna keep project case the same name already exists. Do you wanna replace it? Uh, I'm gonna click cancel. So I'm gonna go to two. Save, and then I've got both. So I've got both options there, and I could even potentially print both. And you can see just a slightly different shape from the version I designed to the AI. You might prefer the AI one. I know I would probably be happy trying it out because that would have taken all of 10 seconds as opposed to five minutes. Um, but again, you can customize things to how you want with the manual workflow, and it's still a very streamlined and easy workflow. Uh, we'll go through the same thing again so you can see what the workflow is with Exacad and also with InLab, and then uh, make your mind up from there. So uh, look out for these tutorials over the next few days, and we'll go from there. Cheers, guys.